Hello everybody and welcome to our webinar. Uh, today we will discuss possibilities to apply quick field for simulations of power transmission lines. Energy generated at our power plants should be delivered to energy consumers by a complex system of transmission and distribution network. A major part of this technology is based on the power transmission lines and their safety and efficiency is affected by a variety of electromagnetic heat transfer and structural considerations. And many of analysis types related to power transmission lines, design and optimization may be performed with quick field software. This slide lists analysis types available with quick field today. As you see, they include electrostatic, AC and DC conduction, DC, AC and transient magnetic, uh, heat transfer, stress, and actually all these types of analysis may be required for transmission line simulation. Uh, in many cases, individual analysis types of one specific formulation may not be enough, and the field allows coupling. It's connecting of several types of analysis. For example, then results of electromagnetic analysis are used for uh, stress analysis or heat transfer simulations as input parameters. Power lines combine components of very different scales in geometrical sense, and accurate calculation of these field parameters may require very large meshes with very big amount of finite elements of different sizes. Large meshes make the computational task very intense, and fast and efficient solvers of quick field are of huge benefit. Our solvers are based on our special DDM, this means domain decomposition method procedure and provide extreme speeds. As you see on this slide, the field solvers feature quasi-linear dependency between the number of mesh nodes and solution time. In conventional finite element analysis, this dependence is usually of second order. Practically, it means what in majority of practical cases, the field gives results within minutes, not hours or days, which were traditional cost of finite element simulations before. In addition to graphical user interface, the field features uh, application programming interfaces, allowing access to our internal functions and data structures from other Windows applications. This open object architecture may be used from applications developed uh, in many modern programming environments, including Microsoft Visual Studio, which supports programming languages C++ or C Sharp, uh, Visual Basic, for application, MATLAB, Python, and many others. In some cases, quick field components communicate with quick field core via this interface. This is how our parametric analysis utility label mover works. Open object interface to quick field core is called active field, and it includes objects and methods which are explained in detail on our website. We provide plenty of parametric examples and free utilities you may use with any version of quick field. Uh, most important, all of these diverse and sophisticated features are wrapped into a very straightforward and easy to use and intuitive user interface. No special training required. Even the high school students may start using it for their class assignments in fully automatic mode and gradually use more advanced settings and approaches uh, with growing complexity of their tasks. A range of computer applications is extremely large both in the type of analysis and level of problem complexity. And now my colleague Alex will demonstrate how to apply quick field for the power line transmission uh, simulations in his live presentation. Today, following examples will be reviewed. The first case is the parallel wise capacitance. Then we will calculate the transmission line capacitance. Then we will simulate the fiber optic cable and electric transmission line. Then we will calculate the inductance of two parallel wires. Then we will calculate the transmission line inductance in case of transposition of conductors. Then we will simulate the face-to-face -face fault. And then we'll We'll simulate the disk insulator heating and mechanical stress in the disk insulator. So let's start with the first example. 
capacitance is one of the important parameters of transmission line. And here is the simple case. There are two parallel wires composing the transmission line. The distance between wires is half of the meter. The wire diameter is 5 millime 10 millimeters. And our task is to calculate the capacitance. The influence of the ground is not taken into account. The capacitance is the geometrical parameter. It doesn't depend on the voltage applied. And for this simple case, there is the analytical solution. We will simulate this case in quick field and compare the results in quick field and with the analytical solution. In quick field, we will utilize the general approach of capacitance calculation. To calculate the capacitance between two bodies, we should assign positive charge on one body and the negative charge of the same magnitude to another body, and then measure the voltage difference. So this is the equation to calculate the capacitance. Now let's start quick field. I will make the problem from sketch. So I create the new problem. And the problem name is the T line. Then I should specify the problem type. If you can simulate problems of different types, to calculate the capacitance, I choose the electrostatics problem type. And the model class is plane parallel. Now here you can see this is the problem tree with the link to the geometry model and the material data file. And this is the window where we should draw our geometry model. So we start with the conductor. This is our conductor and it has the diameter of one centimeter. And the conductor, now I will put the conductor in the proper place. Now, this is the first conductor. And the second conductor is located here. Let's, let's check the distance between the conductors. It should be half a meter. OK, now I have two conductors. And I should add the air in my model. So I draw the external boundary. That's all. This is my geometry model. The next step is to assign labels to geometric objects. Labels are used to identify the objects and to assign physical properties to objects. 
Now this is the air. In fact, there is no electric field inside the conductor, so I label on the, the conductor surface. Positive. And this is the negative. Then we have the external boundary. Far away from our transmission line, the field fades to zero. So at external boundary, I will specify zero potential. Now we have air block, two conductors, and the boundary. The next step is to assign the physical properties to each object. For the air, in electric problem I should specify the electric permittivity of the media. So for the air I specify 1. It's a relative electric permittivity of the air. for the conductors. For the conductors I specify negative and the positive voltage. And for the external boundary, I specify zero voltage. The field fades to zero far away from the transmission line. Please note that the capacitance value doesn't depend on the voltage applied. The capacitance is the geometric parameter. So you can specify any value here. The next step is to build the finite element mesh. To build the finite element mesh, you should just press one button. The mesh is ready. Now the geometry model is ready, the data is ready, and the mesh is ready. We can simulate the problem. Here you can see the electric field distribution in case of two wise transmission line. Now to measure the capacitance I need to know the charge and the potential difference. I surround the conductor with the contour. And this is the electric charge. The negative conductor will have the same charge in quick field we got the charge of 
1.2, then we divide it by the potential difference, 2 volts, and the capacitance is 6 microfarads per kilometer. And the analytical solution gives us 6.03. This is the real transmission line, and here is the basic theme of the three-phase transmission line. There are three phase conductors placed above the Earth. We know the distances between conductors and the distance between each conductor and the Earth, and our task is to calculate the capacitance. In fact, there are several capacitances here. There are self-capacitance of each conductor and the mutual capacitance between conductors and the mutual capacitance between conductors and Earth. Uh, the general equation is the following. The potential of the conductor depends on the charge of the conductor and the charges of other conductors. Here the C is not the capacitance, it's the potential coefficient and has the dimension of one per target. And there are similar equations for each conductor. All in all, there are 3 by 3 metrics that contains 9 potential partial capacitances. And we should calculate them all. How should we calculate these coefficients? The approach is simple. We leave only one charged body and measure potentials on other bodies. For example, if we put some charge on conductor A, and zero charge on other conductors, we have only one term. And from this term we can calculate the potential coefficient. If we put charge to the conductor B and zero charge to other conductors, then we have only one term and we can calculate mutual capacitance between conductors A and B. Now let's start quick field and apply this method on practice. Here is the electrostatic problem. The problem length is 1 meter, and I will calculate the capacitance per 1 meter of transmission line length. Now let's open the geometry model. Again, there is the air block. And here are the properties of the air. This is our transmission line. There are three phase conductors A, B, and C. And we have the ground surface with zero potential.
Now let's apply our method of calculation of capacitance coefficients. I put some charge on the conductor A. and zero charges on other conductors. Again, the capacitance is the geometrical parameter, so you can choose any value of the charge. Now let's take a look at the field distribution. Let's check the potential of each conductor. Here I type in the coordinates of the conductor A. And this is the potential of the conductor A. I know the charge of the conductor. I know the potential of this conductor. I can calculate the cell cap capacitance. Now let's measure the potential of conductor C. I type in the coordinates of the conductor C. The conductor C located is here. And this is the potential of the conductor C. I can calculate now the mu shock capacitance. And the same for the conductor B. I type in the coordinates of the conductor. And this is the potential of the conductor B. The same I should repeat for each conductor. The next step would be set zero charge here, some charge on conductor B. Solve problem again and again measure the potential of each conductor. It's a tiresome task, so in quick field there is there is the two the capacitance matrix calculator. Capacitance matrix calculator asks you to choose the conductors. There are many objects and we Capacitance matrix calculator need conductors only. And then it will repeat operation you did manually. It assigns some charges to conductors, measures energy, and calculate self and mutual capacitance coefficients. So these are the results. There are three conductors, A, B, C, five problems were simulated, and the capacitance matrix was generated, was calculated three by three. These are the capacitance for the conductor A, three Point two, and three point two for the conductor C, as they are located symmetrically. They are located at the same distance from the Earth. And the conductor B, located at the top, and has slightly different capacitance. This is the conductor B, and these are mutual capacitance between the conductors. So this is the way you calculate the capacitance of real transmission line. Now here is the next case. 
Optic cable is the data cable. In some cases, it is convenient to use already built transmission line to traverse the optical cable. Of course, to reduce the influence of power lines, we would like to find some place with low electromagnetic field. So this is our task to calculate the electromagnetic field produced by the transmission line and find the spot with the low electric field. So again, I will start quick field. Let's take a look at the problem properties. Transmission line works at the AC alternating current, so this is the problem type is the AC conduction. I will simulate the AC electric field. The frequency is 50 Hz, and the transmission line length is 1 km. Now let's take a look at the geometry model. Again we have the air block and the electric permittivity of the air is specified. And this is our, the, our transmission line. There are two chains of these conductors. This is the conductor of A, B, and C. And for each conductor, I specify the voltage, the magnitude of the voltage, and the phase. In this problem, the A conductor has zero phase. The B conductor has the phase of 120 degrees, and the C conductor has the phase of 240 degrees. Now let's take a look at the simulation result. Here is the electric field produced by our transmission line. Now let's adjust the field picture. I will switch to the voltage color map. Here you can see the spot the place where the potential is minimal. Let's check the potential value here. It's about three and a half kilovolts. And our transmission line carries the conductors at one hundred. 10,000 kilovolts. So presumably this is the best place. Now let's check the electric field stress distribution. I switch to the electric field stress.
Now there are two spots. This one and this one. And again I can check the potential here and the electric clusters. So there are three points. Here I have low electric field stress but high potential 30 kilovolts. Here I have low potential only 3 kilovolts and the electric field stress about 6 kilovolts per meter. And here low, very low electric field stress but high potential. Using this color map you can choose where to place the optical cable. Another important parameter of the transmission line is the inductance. Again here is the simple case there are only two conductors to parallel wires composing the transmission line. The distance between wires is half of a meter and the wire diameter is one centimeter. Our task is to calculate the inductance. The influence of the ground is not taken account in this problem. The inductance is the geometrical parameter. It doesn't depend on the current or voltage applied and for this simple case there is the analytical solution. And we will simulate this case in quick field and compare the results with the analytical solution. We will utilize the general approach of inductance calculation to calculate the inductance between two conductors. We should energize them with the same current in that conductor the current flows in one direction, in the conductor the current flows in other direction and then we should measure the magnetic flux. So let's start with quick field. The problem type is magnetostatics. To calculate the inductance I need to simulate the magnetic field, so the problem type is magnetostatics. The geometry model is the same as in electrostatic problem. We have two conductors and the air surrounding our conductors. For the air, in magnetic problem I should specify magnetic properties, the magnetic permeability of one. Conductors are made of copper and for each conductor I specify the magnetic permeability of one and I specify the field source. My con conductors carries the current of one ampere. This is the back current, back conductor, and this is the die conductor.
And of course we have the boundary. We cannot simulate the field in the infinite space. So we have to limit the calculation area. with some boundary. And the, the, the same principle, far away from the transmission line, the field fades to zero. So at the external boundary, it specifies zero magnetic potential. Now let's take a look at the simulation result. This is the magnetic field distribution. I know the current, I need to calculate the flux. To calculate the flux, I will build the integration contour from one conductor to another. And now I will integrate the magnetic flux that passes this contour. This is the magnetic flux. To calculate the inductance, I should divide the value of the magnetic flux by the current value, 1 ampere. So the inductance in this case is 1.9 to the 10 in the power of minus 6. And of course there is the inductance wizard to calculate the inductance. There are two conductors. This is the left conductor, and this is the right conductor. And this is the flux calculated by the inductance wizard. Then the wizard divides the flux by the current value, and this is the inductance. This is the flux I calculated manually, and this is the flux calculated by the inductance wizard. One point nine three. And let's compare with the analytical solution. One point nine four. Mean Henry per kilometer. You can see you can trust the results calculated in quick fields. Now let's move to the next case. This is the real transmission line. There are three phase conductors. There is the ground surface. And there is the transposition of the conductors. And again, our task is to calculate the inductance. Of course, there are several inductances here. The magnetic flux linked with the phase A depends on the current in the phase A and the current in the phase B and in the phase C. So there are self-inductance and mutual inductance between conductors. To get the best result, you should repeat the experiment. So in this problem, we will try to repeat, repeat the experiments that you will do with a real transmission line. And in real transmission line, you do not measure fluxes. You measure the voltages and the currents.
So this is quick field and the problem the problem type is AC magnetics. The transmission line carries the AC current and to simulate AC magnetic field I choose the problem type AC magnetics and the frequency of the current is 50 Hz. The length of the transmission line is 120 kilometers. Let's take a look at the geometry model. There is the air block. And for the air block, I specify the magnetic permeability of 1. And there are three phase conductors. A, B, and C. C conductor A B A on the top B on the right C on the left for each conductor I specify the magnetic permeability of the material and the electric conductivity Also, there is the ground surface with zero potential, and the calculation error is surrounded by the boundary. And once more, in this problem, we have the electric circuit. There are no field source specified in the label properties. The sources are specified in electric circuit. So this is the electric circuit. These are voltage sources for the phase A. I specify the magnitude of the source and the phase. For the phase B, I have the phase 120, and for the phase C, I have the phase of 240. These are the conductors. And this is the load. So my transmission line, this is my transmission line, is connected to the three-phase source, and the other end of the line is connected to the three-phase load. The simulations run simultaneously. Both the field part is simulated and the circuit part is simulated. Let's take a look at the simulation result. This, this is the field distribution, the magnetic field distribution produced by my transmission line. Again, I would like to repeat the real experiment. I will not measure the fluxes, I will measure the currents and voltage. These are the circuit simulation results. Now you know that the transmission line conductors are not symmetrically placed above the earth. So each conductor carries slightly different current because each conductor features slightly different inductance.
what is done in practice? In practice, you have the transposition. After some distance, the conductors change place so that overall inductance of each conductor is the same. Let's simulate the transposition in quick field. This is my simulation case of the transmission line without transposition. The transmission line total length is 120 kilometers. And now this is the new problem. Let me show you the geometry model. The geometry model consists of three parts. Each part represents its own condition, its own position of the phase conductor. So here we have A on the top, B on the right, C on the left. And here we have C on the top, A on the right, B on the left. And here we have C on the right, A on the left, and B on the top. So this model consists of three independent models. And these three models are connected through electric circuit. This is the electric circuit. In fact, this phase conductor consists of three parts. One, two, three. And B conductor consists of three parts. And the C conductor consists of three parts. So this is the 3 by 40 kilometers parts in my model. And I change the model length to 40 kilometers. Now let's take a look at the results. These are three parts of my transmission line. Part 1, part 2, part 3. And let's take a look at the circuit result. Now, each conductor carries the same current. So applying the transposition we we distinguish it the disbalance in currents. And this can be simulated with quick field. Now to the next case, phase to phase fault. You know it happens sometimes. Conductors they there is a fault to the ground or fault phase to phase fault. And the large current flows in the conductors in this case. 
And our task is to simulate this case and find how the currents will change in time. Let's switch to quick field. Now here is the quick field simulation problem. We have the A block, and for the A block I specify the magnetic permeability of the A, and we have the three phase conductors. A, B, and C. And for the each conductor, I specified the magnetic permeability and the electric conductivity. In this problem, I would like to simulate the transient process. So the problem type is transient magnetics. The line length is 20 kilometers. And for the transient problem, I should also specify the, the timing, the integration time step, and the final calculation time. Again, in this problem, I have the electric circuit. These are conductors. This is the load. And this is the voltage source. And this is the voltage source, for example, some transformer internal resistance and the inductance. For the transient problem, I specify the equation that depends on the time. This equation describes the sinusoidal function. This is the true P. P means 180 degrees. And this is the frequency, 50 hertz. And this is some small element, this, the switch. At some moment of time, we have the fault occurs, and these conductors are connected with one, with one another, with each other. Let's take a look at the simulation result. This is the field distribution at the initial moment of time. It would be more informative to look at this circuit. This is the phase A current. A phenomenal operation. 
So it's about 500 amperes. And then at some moment of time, the fault occurs, face-to-face -face fault. And the current rises drastically. There is some a periodic part in the current. And with Q filter you can find the current value, how the current changes in time, and you can find losses and forces. So this is the mechanical force acting on the conductor in with nominal current. But when the current fault occurs at this point, 1.01 seconds, the forces increase drastically. And of course the heat generated increases. So our next problem is related with the heating. This is the disk insulator. The insulator consists of the metal cap, the porcelain body, and the clamp. And the insulator could be connected one after another in chain. You know the transmission line are built in the open air so there are humid, there are some pollution in the air that produces the conducting, the thin conducted layer on the insulated surface. And the fault could occur, the current will carry through the conducting layer. Our task is to calculate the temperature. The flowing current will ge generate some power losses. We will calculate the leakage current. and the insulator temperature. To calculate the temperature, I will simulate two problems. In electric problem, I will calculate the leakage current and the losses. And in the heat transfer problem, I will calculate the temperature. So let's take a look at the geometry model. This is the cross section of the insulator. The model class is axisymmetric. That means that we have the rotational symmetry, and the horizontal axis is the rotation axis. The alternating voltage is applied to the clamp, and other part is connected to the transmission line power. So this part has zero potential, and this part has high voltage potential. The frequency is 50 Hz, and 
we need to calculate the current that flows in the layer, thin layer of the dirty on the insulator surface. So we have the porcelain insulator with very low electric conductivity and we have the thin layer of dirty with high electric conductivity. So let's imagine some rainy day. There is a water on the surface of the insulator and the water is not pure water, it's a conductor. And we need to calculate the leakage current through this water layer. This is the grounded part with zero voltage and this is the high voltage part 10 kilovolts voltage you know this is quite about 10 insulators for transmission line of 110,000 kilovolts so it's about 10 kilovolts per one insulator now let's take a look at the simulation results. This is the electric field lines and I'm interested in the currents. So I will switch on the current density. There is almost no current in the insulator body but there is current in the small layer of water on the insulator surface. This is how the current flows. And of course this current produces some draw heat. So I select the layer and I will calculate the active power produced in the volume. About 15 watts produced in the thin layer of the water on the insulator surface. Now let's calculate the temperature. To calculate the temperature I will simulate the heat transfer problem. So this is the heat transfer problem, the same geometry model. In heat transfer problem I should specify thermal properties for each object. I specify thermal conductivity of the porcelain And I should specify the volume power generated. There is a way in QuickField that you can transfer the calculation results from one problem to another problem. We call it coupling. as the power losses are not distributed uniformly in the layer I cannot simply put 15 bits in thermal problem 
I would like to, to import the power distribution from electric problem. So in my heat transfer problem, I create the link, the link to the electric problem. From electric problem, I will import the generated heat, and the temperature will be calculated based on this generated heat. So again, the rainy day. Humid air, some calm flowing on the surface of the insulator. The temperature outside is only 10 degrees Celsius. Now let's take a look. Now let's calculate the insulator temperature. The insulator is heated by the leakage current. So you can see the insulator temperature is about 25 degrees Celsius, and the air temperature is 10 Celsius. This is how you can simulate the leakage current and calculate the temperature of the insulator. Now the next, the last example is the mechanical stress in the TISC insulator. You know that the wire has some weight, and in winter the ice and the snow could fall, and the ice and the snow will add the weight to the wire, and insulators are connected in chains, so after the first insulator we have another one, another one, and up to 10 insulators for the 110 kilovolts transmission line. So my first insulator should be strong enough to for the weight of other insulators and we have some wind wind force and remember in transmission line there are cars and there is the ampere force so the total force acting on the insulator is about 000. almost 3,000 newtons to be on the safe side. We would like that our insulator would, wouldn't damage it if we exceed the weight. So let's apply let's apply three times this weight. Let's apply 8,400 newtons on the insulator and calculate the mechanical stress. So this is the geometry model of my insulator, of the transmission line insulator. The insulator consists of the cement, of the metal cap, of the porcelain, 
one of the clamps one of the clamps is fixed. It is connected to the transmission line pole. And at this end the load the mechanical load is applied. The fixed the left side is fixed. And on the right clamp I apply the mechanical force. It is the combined force from the while the weight from the wind, from the ampere force, and other parameters. In, me in mechanical problem for each object, I specify the mechanical properties. And the problem type is stress analysis. Now let's take a look at the simulation result. I will adjust the field picture. So you will see the deformed boundary. And here you can take a look at the stress distribution. For the porcelain, the maximum stress is about 30 megapascals. So uh, I will adjust the field picture and the red regions in the porcelain are the regions that will fold 